but they still manage to keep the genetics going. So that's seed saving, that's um, seed care. There's a story like that in Jim Petito's book. In whose? Jim Petito's. Well, tell the story. Yeah. A uh, friend of ours who, I guess this is his dissertation or something like that, he published a little book about primarily apples and corn and lists all these varieties of Appalachian apples and corn that have been raised in, for generations, like hundreds of each. But he has also little essays by different people. One of them is a story, this plant geneticist, I forget where he's from, retired university guy. Somebody contacted him from Oregon and said, I have these like half a dozen seeds that my for my family, I can't remember exact details, but you know, I'm afraid to plant them myself because you know I don't want to waste them. Can you make sure they're viable and make sure you know make sure they work? And he took like six or ten seeds or something, and one of them grew and was able to propagate. And next you know next year he had enough to disseminate again. So. Nice, yeah. great. He has a, one of those Y2K Millennium Gardens in a can. Uh -huh. We still have it. It's never been <laughs> basement for years. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're probably still good. I mean, yeah. hopefully they packed them really well. Yes, Ed. Uh, I took a class from Lee Barnes one time okay. years ago at the co-op on seed saving, and he said that the thing that you want to guard against is the changes of the temperature. And that's the reason that the refrigerator was good, not because it was cold, but it was set between 33 mm. and 36 degrees or something like that, so there was a very little of changing of the temperature. Yeah, I would say that you that that there's a good point there. What you don't want to do is freeze seed, take it out, and leave it out for a long time. It goes down real fast. If I freeze seed, I go in there, get my seed out, right, and put it in another similar similar temperature container that I seal and let come to room temperature so that it doesn't condense on it. Unless I'm going to use it immediately, in which case I don't care because I'm going to get it wet anyways. But I don't let my bulk of seed like you know, I froze actually the um, white lady half pound that I bought for years. I bought it like back in 2005 or something, right? Mm -hmm. I finally brought it down here and moved it in the fridge. There doesn't seem to be any significant loss in germination. I'm still getting darn near 100%. But if I had brought it down here and left it in my room or something, or heaven help me, left it in the greenhouse, it probably would have just dropped right off in, vi in viability. So I think you want to be aware of that, but I still think for seed that is really precious, that freezing is, is, you know, what I'd recommend probably is that you keep at room temperature and cool your working supply, but your backup supply, yeah. you know, your supply to be sure you still have it, yeah. a freezer is your guarantee. Yeah. Well, you know? my, my, I guess most people have a basement up here in the mountain. Yep. And my idea is don't keep any seed in the house. Keep yeah. it all in the basement at least. Yeah, but <laughs> have it in a glass jar put it in there when it's dry because basements tend to be too humid. So that's the other. But on the other hand, Rob Danford, who um, is a seed saver up in um, the Boone area, he keeps all his seed in five gallon buckets in his house. And he's got fine viability. His house is not real, real humid. He's got it in a cool room. And he goes through it enough that he keeps it viable. So it depends on how long you're trying to keep it. I tend to sometimes buy a lot of seed or save a lot of seed, either because I had really productive seed production or I had a great deal on it. And that's where you get in trouble. If you're going through it a lot, and indeed, um, Tom Elmore, who's one of my um, models of how I wish I was as far as organization and how he approaches things, I mean, I am nowhere near there, you know. I have my attributes, Tom's got his, you know, and um, we share attributes, you know. But one attribute that he has that I don't have is a much more practical way of approaching the world as far as organization. So I asked him one time, as I, you know, went through my huge seed mess and tried to figure out what I had and how to order and spent three days inventory and all that. How he kept track of the seed and how he stored it. He said, I keep it all in a file folder. And I said, doesn't that get a little bit unwieldy as you get build up of seed and stuff? He said, I have no build up. At the end of the year, I give away any seed I didn't use and I order new. There you go. Oh. That's what I wondered. I wondered. Okay. So everybody's got their own approach. Yeah. You know? And you know what? I think I'm saving money, but for the, for the opportunity cost, for the time spent <laughs> saving that seed, I'm probably losing money. And the struggle. You're yeah. trying to make sure all the seeds grow, you know, that, but you know, you've got more of a guarantee on the new Yeah. He's a on the other hand, though. Oh, absolutely. I am totally, yes, yes, He's absolutely. You. I confess, I confess, you know, guilty peck rat. He's dependent on the system. 
Dependent on the system, yes. Yep. That's true. That's true. And if all of a sudden mail stopped, right. you know, you couldn't get him any longer, he right. might call him. He can call me up and say, Pat, what you got? And I'd share whatever I have with him. You, know? you bet. <laughs> right. You do what you could. Because it's all about mutual aid. You know, That's we're in right. this together. That's you know? right. Yeah. That looks are we taking a break? Is this a break? Uh, no, there, sometimes we just take groups because that's group dynamics, you know? <laughs> you know? Suddenly, somebody is more interesting than me or whatever. And then, you know. <laughs> I, know, I figured out some years ago when it comes to money that the savers save so the spenders can spend. Yes. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Even for the seeds. <laughs> um, okay, does anybody have any questions on the stuff we've covered so far? Um, there's just endless, you know, Endless um, detail we can give on that. One thing I'd say, probably the last thing I'd say about the seed saving concept and all that, is it's actually good to do that not just because you're preserving seed, but because it's good for you to learn what plants look like in all their cycles. And plants are meant to finish their cycles. I actually have a spiritual feeling about that. I mean, you know, I don't mean this is some organized religion or something, but. There's a certain connection I get when I see plants doing everything they're supposed to do. And they're also gorgeous. I mean, you see an onion when it's in bloom and it's just incredible, you know? Um, people always will stop and look at the incredible complexity of it. And the other thing is, they'll also notice the huge amount of life that's around it, the buzz that's happening. So your seed production is also part of your farmscaping. You're producing, you know, seed while you're creating greater diversity and feeding the insects and oftentimes the predator right or the parasitoid right which is one, similar to a predator right but it controls the pest of a garden pest its favorite food is the flowers of the attacked plant perfect example is braconid wasps who control cabbage cabbage worms right richard mcdonald my entomologist friend dr mcbug right tells a story which I always manage to fit into every talk. You know, there's certain things that I fit into every talk. It doesn't matter what the subject is, right? Um, bread is a little harder, but you know, I'll manage to fit it in there anyways. Um, you have a Braconid wasp, right? You have two, two sister Braconid wasps, right? And early, you know, early in their stages there was a huge windstorm or whatever and they got scattered, right? One finds itself in a parking lot, right? Where all along comes a male, because they always do, and they mate, right? There's no food in the parking lot, right? That wasp will lay 30 eggs and they'll all be male, right? Meanwhile, back on my farm, the other sister landed and I'm letting my broccoli go to seed, right? I'm going to try and save seed or maybe I'm just letting it go to seed because the flowers are gorgeous and I like to see the process. That Braconid wasp chooses, Braconid wasp chooses that broccoli flower to feed on. She has a great meal and then she mates. She lays 300 eggs and they're all female. And what happens? All those reproduce in the garden. You build up these huge levels of, mm -hmm. of predation because you let plants go to... I mean, you do more than that for farmscaping, but it's a big piece of farmscaping. And if you do that, I mean, lots of things are easy. Lettuce, it's so easy to save lettuce seed. Arugula, it's so easy to save. You don't have to save everything. Let, let some of every type of plant go to seed. It's a really great way to get into creating diversity, learning more about nature. It's our best teacher. And feeding your beneficials. Okay, we're now going to talk potting soil. Unless the people need a bathroom break or a drink break, we, by the way, have a wonderful uh, spring that we all drink from. It comes gushing out of the side, side of the hill here. It's cold as can be and delicious. I, for some reason, I